42 seconds of logos that aren't modified in a cutesy smurfy way. At this point, I'm expecting to see some silly little logo fuckery that tries to distract me from the 42 seconds of logos. Step it up, Sony Animation. There is a place. Narration, goddammit, because of course. A place that knows no sadness. Immediately gonna call bullshit on the fact that the narration says there's no sadness in Smurf Village. There's literally a Smurf named Grouchy, who's angry and sad all the time. Three apples high. AKA three assholes high. Also, if Smurfs are supposed to be three apples tall, that's like eight inches or so, which really f***s with every preconceived notion I ever had about the size of the Smurfs, including the size they're shown at in this movie. I'm going in! Woo! The Smurfs are supposed to be hidden away in a magically protected village to guard against people finding them, but these Smurf holes are out riding around in broad daylight, yelling like they're coming back from a kegger. Also, movie suggests Smurfs can control birds. These birds fly through the barrier like it's no big deal, so how do other non-Gargamel predators not come upon the village, even by accident? Also, I wish you knew how much this movie's opening two minutes felt like one of my wife's Disney Tinkerbell straight to home video movies. Of course, it's Smurfette they're tossing around haphazardly, because the Smurfs are nothing if not horribly sexist. Smurf Village has a narrator, pizza maker, and an ice sculptor, and is already the most pretentious movie society I've ever seen. I just invented frozen pizza! No, you didn't, and f you. Smurf Dominoes, Smurf Nose! Live in the forest with 99 sons and one daughter. Nothing weird about that! This is set by a character that's made puppets out of the little creatures with which he's obsessed. Also, Gargamel would rather spend the huge amount of time it takes to create these Smurfy Annettes than just devise a plan to kill the real Smurfs. Gargamel loves the theater, though, so... But all of that is about to change! Oh, oh Hank Azaria. That paycheck dragged you into this, didn't it? I shall become the most powerful wizard in all of the world. <laughs> Leaked footage of Gargamel's audition for Now You See Me somehow made it into the movie. Look, even if this looked real, I'd send the laughing cat. But as it is, I'm going to send the butthole who decided that CGI laughing cat ended at the point where the cat looked like a cross between a puking emu and a hyena. It's only by capturing the little wretches and extracting the happy blue essence that my magic will finally become... Uh, not infallible. Invincible, yes! Man, that Trolls movie really does owe Smurf some f***ing royalty checks for this story. However do you expect to find us? I have a magical map that shows me exactly where the Smurf root grows. But he's just getting around to tracking them now? How long has he had that f***ing map? The fact that this real cat is actually supposed to be the same as that CGI laughing cat further illustrates the problem with the CGI laughing cat. I see. So he's evil, but actually terrible at magic and evil plans and such? For a far superior and actually entertaining take on this archetype, see Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. Ye gods, Hesriel. You a boy? Cock and balls humor in a kid's movie. Mm, I must get the visioning potion just right. The magic is always strongest during the blue moon. Who the f*** is he talking to? Oh, right, us. The vision's never been wrong. I can't let this happen to my smurfs. Vision Oracle Prophecy unreliably shows the plot of the movie cliché. Clumsy was told by Papa to stay in the village, and immediately went out to pick the Smurf root he was told not to pick. Clumsy Smurf's name should be Disobedient Smurf. No matter how clumsy he is from this point on, it's his disobedience that's the real problem here. The fact that a cat can't catch a Smurf. What did you see in your vision, Papa? <laughs> Nothing. <clears throat> Perfect! Another year we don't have to worry about that mean old Gargamel! I know he's trying not to induce a panic, but as soon as Papa saw the vision of Gargamel, shouldn't he have told at least someone? He could show up any time. Like, now! Sound the alarm, crazy! <laughs> Why is Crazy Smurf the one with the alarm noise? Shouldn't he be called Horny Smurf or something? How does crazy and alarm sounding go together at all? Gargamel is literally on top of these tiny creatures and has a large net, but is able to wrangle exactly zero of these f***ers. I know he's supposed to be incompetent, but it's almost like he's trying to screw up. Your primitive little defenses are useless against me, sir. <laughs> Gargamel did so much mocking that he got a good, proper e-walking. Har har, the sign is horribly misleading, but what I'm really wondering is why the other Smurfs ignored what looked like a normal sign and went the other way. He's headed for the Forbidden Fall! With the blue moon coming? What does one of those things have to do with the other? This goddamn blue moon is the Smurfiest MacGuffin I've ever seen. Agony ahead! Who the wrote these signs. It had to be someone that's been through the agony of the Forbidden Falls, and if so, how'd they make it back? Just gonna throw this out there. Does anyone care if Clumsy dies right now? He's not even well-meaning so far. He's literally tried to put himself in situations where he'll f*** things up, and here he didn't notice a goddamn cliff ahead of him. Let him go, Papa. Let him go. The Blue Moon! Jesus Christ, it was clearly light when they ran into this cave, and they've been here for 20 seconds. I bet during screenwriting meetings, anytime someone got stuck, someone else would say, just throw that Blue Moon in there. Brilliant! For reasons completely unexplained for the rest of the movie, this exact spot forms a portal to Central F***ing Park whenever the Blue Moon shows up. Papa chooses an unknown vortex over Gargamel imprisonment. That's a bold choice, Cotton. Oh my god, they're in our world. F I should have known this was coming, but somehow I didn't. God damn it. 
Also, this movie is a complete ripoff of Enchanted, only with none of the charm, plus the most offensive CGI cat of all time. Smurfs? You may want to take a look at this. What is it? You may want to smurf a look at this cliche. Oh. My. Smurf. Where the smurf are we? Up the smurfing creek without a paddle. Smurfy smurf, 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 smurf in my smurf smurf, you lazy ass one joke movie. Must. Have. Smurf! But there are 94 other smurfs behind you running through the forest. You know this because you only saw six of them in here getting sucked through the vortex. So Gargamel's motivation for going through this vortex is stupid. Yes, he is stupid, but the movie is even stupider is my point. Oh, hey, can we get the photographer over there? There's bigger rivals happening. I'd be tempted to say something about them dragging Neil Patrick Harris into this, but he was in those Harold and Kumar movies. And A Million Ways to Die in the West. Then again, he was brilliant in that Dr. Horrible show I referenced earlier, so you see the bind I'm in. New cliche alert! Character who is anxious or depressed or stressed grabs a drink off a passing server's tray at a party to represent their desire to drown their worries in alcohol cliche. Seriously, think about it. This happens all the time in movies. We're all gonna die. I wish you would. Look, your five-year-old probably loved this movie, but you know what? F*** your five-year-old. Wait, wait, I forgot my phone. Stop your cabbie! Never mind, here it is. Hilarious gag, but both the cabbie and his passenger would have heard and investigated that human-sized thump behind the car. Gratuitous New York City worship continues the Enchanted ripoff theme and also rolls Muppets Take Manhattan into the mix. Let's see how many ripoffs we can count in this movie before it's over. Geez, between the references to Community, Vampire Weekend, and Broadway's American Idiot, you might as well call this 2010 the movie. I guess this is our stop. How f***ing far away from Midtown Manhattan does Doogie live? When they were driving through Times Square, it was the middle of the day, but now it's night again? How much do you need to f*** with time in a Smurfs movie, Smurfs movie? There are four f***ing lamps in this room, which is excessive, since I'm fairly sure the room also has overhead lighting. But what I'm really concerned about is the world's tiniest dumbbell here on the coffee table. What are these? Weights for ants? The backup ads we have did fine in focus groups. I could retool those, but I have to work around the clock. Patrick does eventually get those ads ready to go, in addition to a whole other campaign, but works very little over the next two days. <coughs> well, we've had a cat balls joke and now a puke joke. Movie is already competing with Shrek for the most lowbrow jokes in 100 minutes. And now a porta potty joke. This movie was written for first graders by fifth graders. If it's that easy to break into Belvedere Castle's basement, I guarantee there'd be a sea of homeless people sleeping there right now. And now with the accidentally waking up the local dog thing, we add Toy Story to the list. We're up to three ripoffs, kids, and less than a half hour into the film. Clumsy! Is that you? What is it about New Yorkers in movies that always leave their f***ing windows open, especially at night? Barney's in the office with the door closed and Emma from Glee is in bed. It's 11.37. Yes, he's about to eat soap because that's hilarious, of course. What'll really get you guffawing later is when he starts burping bubbles, which I guarantee goddamn sure as I'm alive tell you he will do. <laughs> See? It didn't even take eight seconds. It writes itself, mostly because it's a series of other movies gags. Clumsy Rube Goldberg's himself into the toilet, which is a perfect metaphor for this movie, actually. This knocks him over. Oh look, there are two more lamps in this room we've yet to be shown. That makes six so far. So now we're counting rip-off moments and lamps in this room. Go back to the sewer! I'm not saying I wouldn't freak out and attack these things if they suddenly appeared in my home, but I definitely wouldn't assume they came from the sewers. They have hats. Only intelligent creatures wear hats. Duh. Finally! I have my Smurfalator! <laughs> sure, Gargamel's repurposed the shit that was in the castle basement, but there's no way he had the tools to tighten those pipe fittings. Maybe he called a 24-hour plumber, but if so, he got charged out the ass. Hey, would you care for a mint? when you're done. Movie races past Shrek on the patio meter before the 30 minute mark. This one tiny drop will give me the power to capture them all. How the shit does that work? You need the essence of a smurf to catch a smurf? And all this really does is allow Gargamel to blow up? How crazy is this? They're little blue people. This is exactly what Peo said after he dropped a massive amount of LSD and started drawing these little fuckers. And you're all named after your personalities? Do you get your names when you're born or after you've exhibited certain traits? Patrick would be excellent at CinemaSins. Right now I'm using Google. Ooh. Wow, they paid for a visual product placement and a dialogue shout out? Jesus, Google basically funded this movie, right? Also, the icon shows that Patrick's laptop is plugged in, which it definitely is. Also, movie spends all this time espousing the virtues of Google, but Patrick is using Internet Explorer instead of Chrome as his browser. Papa stomps all over this laptop's function keys, but doesn't cause anything on the computer to actually happen. Clumsy, I think it might be best if you, uh, if you stay here. Could the movie be trying any harder to set Clumsy up to be the hero? Quick, quick. Oh, good night, little world! God f***ing sh ass, damn it! It's dark in here! Alright, who smurfed? <sighs> this attempt to block the glass walls of his office is ridiculously inept. Anyone walking by his office could easily see the Smurfs. Turn that frown upside down. Always bet on blue. Have a Smurfy day. I kissed a Smurf and I liked it. Oh, f*** you, movie. And they went without you? Yeah. 
I mean, who knows why? <laughs> clumsy Smurf is presented as being completely unaware as to how clumsy he is, which is stupid as hell. Also, rather than be concerned that these tiny magical creatures are out and about in one of the largest cities in the world, Grace focuses on Clumsy's despair at being left out. Homeless dude and a cat are able to get this close to a high-level cosmetics demonstration without encountering any security whatsoever. What is it that you desire? Mm -hmm. Riches? Fame? Fortune? Um, two of those three things mean the same thing. This is a fascinating wind machine. Which was nowhere on any of these shelves a few moments ago. Also, the pin face hand Spencer Gifts game is now one shelf lower than it was earlier and has a Smurfette imprint on it. That Project Runway guy gets more screen time in this movie than he does in any episode of Project Runway. Also, this fine dining restaurant allowed a cat in. Then Project Runway dude ordered cat friendly sh like caviar. Then the cat ate the caviar and everyone acted surprised and put out. Do I have that right? No Smurfs were killed in the crossing of this road, which is a minor miracle. But I'm so checked out, I literally give negative f**ks. Oh, so that's where all the unicorns went. Look, Chris makes the schedule, and he assigns the writers, and he gave this movie to me and Barrett. But this movie came out in 2011, and I'm pretty sure that means Chris was working at a theater, and would have seen this movie because he would have built a print of it. So this is basically a case where he took advantage of his position as a schedule maker to ensure that he didn't have to sit through this ass-wiping movie another time and forcing Barrett and I to suffer. And to that I say, Boulder Dash, good sir! Expect a flaming bag of poop on your porch within the fortnight, Chris. I'm serious. The Smurfs f***ing around in a toy store definitely qualifies as a Gremlins ripoff, and I'm done counting, folks. Too many ripoffs. Just add 25 sins for all the ripoffs. I'm just tired of the whole dating game. Just say who you are and be who you say. Wait, is Grouchy in the dating game in Smurf Village? Because his options are severely limited. Bullshit. Those tiny toy telescopes never work, especially to do actual stargazing. I wasn't brought by a stork like the others. I was created by Gargamel to trap the other Smurfs because Smurfs are so horny and stuff. Yeah, play it safe. Wait, playing it safe is the carnivorous picture of the woman as opposed to a f***ing shot of the moon? Marketing be weird, yo. What's worse, that he plays a video game to make the Smurfs feel better, or that I literally have no idea if this is Rock Band or Guitar Hero? It's a complete so agenda! To the power of her! So I close my eyes and make a wish! Smurf rapping. This movie seriously gives Smurfette a Marilyn Monroe vent dress moment, because this movie is f***ed up. That's right, one of the central conflicts of this movie is an IT issue. Damn, I guess even Smurf movies feel the need to candle the f*** out of some candles. You know who I miss? Chef Smurf? Hefty Smurf? Hey, <laughs> Jokey Smurf? Painter? Baker? Hang on, I thought your Smurf name corresponded to a personality trait like brainy or clumsy or grouchy, but Painter and Baker Smurfs are named after what they do. They were pigeonholed from birth. You guys drink coffee? <laughs> is a Smurf's butt blue? I don't know. Thankfully, you all are wearing shorts or underpants or whatever, so I've never been confronted with wondering what a Smurf's butt looks like, until this movie and this line from Papa Smurf, who is basically a deviant from what I can tell. And you never give up on family. Papa Smurf has seen one too many Fast and Furious movies. Knowing what to do doesn't come from up here. It comes from here. But it can't. CBGB's has been closed since 2006. So long, scallywags! Sure, Gargamel's a wizard, but he has no wand, ring, potions, or spells at this point. So how the hell is he able to control these flies? What happened to my office? We fixed it for the baby! But where did they get a crib? Ah, oh, f***! Can you really book every ad space in Times Square and then not send the final ad until overnight the night before it's supposed to air? I don't think that's how advertising works. Nobody sees this. Wow, I was gonna stop counting ripoffs, but this movie throws more Toy Story f at me and it's so obvious it demands to be called out. Breaking and entering. Jesus, how many laws have these Smurf suckers broken so far? Gargamel hears this asshole singing the Smurf song, and that guy just saw the Smurfs going into a bookstore, apparently. I'm calling it a f this movie ex machina. Also, this bookstore is in f***ing Chinatown, and Gargamel was just in Central Park. F*** me, has this movie ever actually been to New York? Once a f***ing again, day turns to night on a mother smurfing dime. Either these smurfs or these pigeons knew how to get from the bookstore back to Patrick's house. Either way, I'm not buying it. This movie wanted a walking tough as a group scene, and it somehow decided to go with Back in Black as the underneath song. Maybe Blue by Leanne Rimes is too slow. Maybe I'm Blue by Eiffel 65 is too fast. But if you're telling me there are zero rock songs with the word blue in the title that go well under a badass hero walk scene, then you are lying. La, 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 la. They have a f***ing war chant. I thought this was a village that only experienced happiness. I guess that also covers bloodlust? They did all that with him flying by drone and dragging this bowling ball balloon contraption just to drop it on Gargamel. That's it? One bowling ball shot? And what are the odds you even actually hit him? This seems like a super overly complicated attack with very little chance of success. As I watch this Smurf tornado, I'm left to wonder, how was the plan not to lure Gargamel out here? 
Then have Patrick hit him in the head and beat his old ass with that crowbar instead of this Smurf-only attack. And Patrick opened that thing for Smurf that ages ago, so where the hell is he? He could end this fight easy. He's just waiting there? F***ing do something, dude. This is like not playing LeBron in the NBA Finals. Yes, the Scottish Smurf just yelled freedom. This movie thinks that's funny. Well, which movie are they ripping off here? Final Destination? Let's go with that, just because I don't want to take the time to list out all the other movies where this happens. Also, that bus driver who never honked in the first place isn't even thinking about stopping after he just plowed into a man. I believe more in a vision than I did in you. Well, the visions had literally never been wrong before, so you were right to think that way. I'm honestly shocked this one particular vision was wrong. Like, Papa's vision abilities are now in doubt. If I was a Smurf, my whole world would be shattered. Hey, Odile. Patrick. I just called to say thank you. Oh, good. Patrick gets to keep his job, which was definitely the most important part of this movie. Finally, someone has given me what I want. Yeah, but he had to literally color the moon to do it. Is he going to be held to that standard from now on? Oh, that, now that is just not appropriate. Look, we at capacity, okay? We'll let some people in when it clears out a little. You'll get right in if you go back to the end of the line. Hey, don't chase me, bro! Don't chase me! Fly and bring back your brethren. Fly! 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 No, young Skywalker. You will die. Look at the size of that boy's head. I'm not kidding, it's like an orange on a toothpick. <laughs> What is your profession? <laughs> These stupid Smurfs go on a huge adventure to New York City and end up living with Doogie Hauser for a while. And what would have been ideal is if Doogie had been a NatureVox customer. Once again, things that could have been brought to my attention yesterday! Then he'd already have tasty, healthy snacks in his home when the stupid Smurfs show up and he could provide them with nourishment and energy after their long journey. He could have gone to naturebox.com slash cinemasins and even gotten 50% off his first order. Then he could have been all, why hello, strange little blue friends, you look hungry. How about some lentil loops or blueberry nom noms? And everyone would have been delighted. Instead, he plays Guitar Hero with them, and they go to a bookstore, and Hank Azaria shows up with that ridiculous CGI cat, and there's... Well, you see what happens when you don't have nature box snacks on hand. Pandemonium! <laughs> so, before you find yourself unexpectedly playing host to super annoying tiny cartoon creatures with nothing on hand to feed them, get your butt to naturebox.com slash cinemasins. They ship to your door, constantly add new snacks and flavors, replace anything you don't like for free, and our fans get 50% off their first order. I mean, Smurf me, that's a great deal. So get going, you, and you, and you over there, and heck, everybody go! That would mean no! <laughs>